Welcome to the first episode of Ask the Hacksmith. Now I'm doing this completely unscripted, so uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just going to go through some of the comments from the first video and answer them the best I can. So, first question from uh, Sam Constante. What is your actual job? Well, Sam, I'm a mechanical designer or a product developer for a high-tech company that I'm not allowed to disclose where I actually work, but I make some really cool stuff there, and it's an awesome job. In addition to that, I also work for Hackaday, so I write articles for that website. In addition to that, I do these videos, and I'm running my own business called Hacksmith Industries. don't really make any money right now, but sometimes I just do things for shits and giggles. Alright, next question. From IZZUNR4T3D, what is your most useful tool in the shop? Hmm, that's got to be a toss-up between my 3D printer and the laser cutter. As of lately, I'm thinking the laser cutter is definitely the, <laughs> the handiest piece of equipment I have. Next up, from Mechie Williams, I like your Make It Real series. Could you possibly make a suit of armor like the Iron Man? That's the goal down the road, but right now, it's not going to be happening anytime soon. It's a pretty, pretty crazy endeavor, and I want to make it actually work, so I'm not going to do that until I have the resources that I need. What was the first project you ever made? That question's from Good Baller. Um, when I was younger, I used to make chainmail, so I guess chainmail, like medieval armor. Um, beyond that, I'm not too sure. One of my one of my biggest projects, which is currently the oldest, would probably be the Wolverine Claws. And I made those about five years ago now. Wow. <laughs> Let's see, uh, from Lumi Cosplay. What is your favorite suit from the whole Iron Man movie line, and Avengers included? I'd have to say Mach 42. It's pretty slick. Uh, another question from Good Baller. How do you manage to keep all your projects in the garage? Well, it's getting pretty tight in here. I'm definitely going to need a bigger garage very soon. Uh, from Fun Gamer SR, who inspired you to do videos? That's hard to say actually. I wasn't really inspired by anyone. I just started making videos when I was back in high school, and I just really liked like doing it, so I continued doing it. Um, what am I studying? From Furco Two. I'm no longer studying, but I did go to school for mechanical engineering. Um, in addition to that, Amar Hammer Dollar says, What college did you go to for mechanical engineering? I went to Conestoga College, which is in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. It's a great program, and it's called Mechanical Systems Engineering. It's a Bachelor of Engineering, and it takes four years to complete. Dan Zen asks, where can we buy Hacksmith shirts and stuff? Smiley face. Love your bids, man. Thanks, Dan Zen. Um, currently, I don't have anything set up for that, but if people are actually seriously interested in getting a shirt with the Hacksmith logo on it, I can look into doing that. So, if you're interested, leave a comment saying so, and I'll look into uh, setting something up like that. Robbie Mitchell asks, hey Hacksmith, is it possible to make pneumatic cylinders of any size with a 3D printer? Well, Robbie, um, definitely is possible, but they wouldn't be anywhere near strong enough for any real functional purpose. For, for small things not requiring much strength, then yeah, totally. But other than that, for like the exoskeleton, definitely not. There's no way you could get the, uh, the pressure requirements to actually have a sizable and strong piston. Um, XX the Brain Box XX says, Have you got a big dream project that you want to work on? I hope you see this. Yes. After the exoskeleton's done, my next main project, which I really hope to do, is building the exoloader suit from the Alien movies. That's the one that Ripley used to kill the Mama Alien. Um, it's quite a bit bigger of a project, and it would probably cost at least five to ten thousand dollars in materials alone, not to mention my time building it. So, I won't be doing that for a while, unless, miraculously, this channel becomes really big, 
if I have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, it's it's quite doable. Because everything everything I make off YouTube goes straight into my projects. So the bigger my channel is, the better my projects would become. So that really helps if you guys subscribe, like, and share my videos with all your friends. Nathan Moore asks, how old are you? I'm 24. Sean Doyle asks, where did you learn the skills to do what you do? To be honest, I'm mostly self-taught. Um, in high school, I always, always did the uh, tech classes, and that's how I learned to use basic hand tools. And then uh, during my engineering degree, I learned a bit more about like machine shops and 3D printers and laser cutters and whatnot. But to be honest, you just have to just have to try. Like it's it's really not that hard. You just have to screw around, pick up some tools, and try using them. <laughs> if not, there's always classes at your local community college or hacker spaces, maker spaces in the area. Great resources. Perspective asks, do you got banana swag? Yes. Manuel Garcia asks, which project took you the most to build, and are you satisfied with it? Hmm. Again, my, I guess one of my biggest projects to date was just the Wolverine Claws. Um, they probably cost a few hundred dollars to make. I was working in a machine shop at the time, which is how I had access to the tools to make them, and I was pretty happy with the result. So, yeah, the Wolverine Claws. 666 Maiden Fan asks, if and when you start up Hacksmith Industries as a full-time company, will you be hiring? Of course. Matthew Weston asks, can you build a flamethrower? I am actually planning on making some uh, flamethrower wrist launchers, so uh, stay tuned for those. Tyler Murray asks, how long did it take to convert your one or two car garage into the Hacksmith Industries shop? Um, it's probably been a few months in the making. I moved here, I guess about five months ago, and it's just been evolving ever since. I think I've gotten to the point where it's pretty much done. There's a few more things I need, like a CNC machine, a um, plasma cutter, some other few things like that. could probably use some more shelves for storing projects, but um, I'm getting pretty happy with the shop. It could be bigger, though. Jimmy Lewis asks, how much time do you sink into making your videos? Do you plan on becoming much more active? I'd love to make more videos, but it is a very time-consuming process, and considering I already work two jobs, probably totaling over 50, 60 hours a week, then making videos and working on projects, it's pretty hard to make more videos. That being said, I'm hoping to do this weekly vlog every Wednesday, and then uh, project videos Mondays and Fridays. And if I can, if I can swing it, I'll try and do more. But um, until I can just do YouTube full time, and it's going to be tricky. Georgie John asks, "Where do you live?" I live in southwestern Ontario, Canada. I used to live in Toronto. Jet Flyer asks, "What is the airspeed velocity of a fully laden swallow?" Well, that depends, Jet Flyer. African or American? Leonard Dagger asks, how did you start off doing what you do now? I just started. No secret, just start doing stuff. I... If you don't do anything, then just do something, you know? Does that arc reactor work? Asked by Creeper Zombie, and... Well, yes. Extrasterosaconco asks, Hi, I want to be an engineer. Is it easy? I am thinking of being an aeroplane engineer. What do you think? Well, ex Rista Xanko, engineering is not that easy. It does take lots of hard work, and you have to be good at math and physics and all kinds of fun stuff. It's basically applied science, so if you don't like that, you're not going to be uh, very happy with engineering. It is worth it in the long run, though, because as an engineer, you know how pretty much everything works, and that's pretty awesome. Isaac Wigan asks, for the Elysium suit, how will you make the arms extend without having to touch the wire to the box? Don't worry, Isaac, I will be having switches wired to it. You don't have to just poke a wire there. <laughs> Sam Derpus asks, is the exoskeleton going to be completely portable? Yes. First Pal asks, what do you do for a living and how do you find time for YouTube? I'm a product developer, like I said, and um, it's pretty hard to find time, because it's basically all I do. Ackman Ra asks, when is the exoskeleton project done? It'll be a while, but like I said in the last video, I'm hoping to have it finished by uh, end of August. Well, not finished, but at least the arms, and I'll show off for a good test run. Dean Fleischer asks, why did you start making the Make It Real videos? Well, Dean, um, 
in today's day and age, we're finally getting to the point where we can make some of that stuff that you've seen in movies and TV actually real. So that's my inspiration for it, because who doesn't want a working Iron Man suit or Elysium or Wolverine claws or whatever? I just think it's really cool. Try installing pulse jets in your exoskeleton so that you can hover on it. That's from uh, Akalesh Ezra. I'd love to, but I don't think that's really feasible. But we'll see. Joe D asks, do you sell any of your projects? Not typically, because they take a really long time to make, and if I sold them, I'd basically be making not much money. So, not usually. Matthias Storm asks, what is the largest project you have ever made besides the exoskeleton? That would have to be the 1993 Honda Del Sol, which I converted to electric using the guts of an electric forklift. Those are some pretty cool videos, so you should check them out. They're from a few years ago, though, so you gotta dig back in my channel. Good Baller asks, what age do you start lifting weights? Well, Good Baller, I actually just started lifting weights about a month ago. <laughs> to be honest, I never really liked the weight room, and before I was an ex-gymnast and a rock climber, and I also did parkour and a bit of free running. So that's where most of my physique comes from. I've just started working out recently at an actual gym, um, because my roommate works out, and it's good for you. Elizabeth Quinlan asks, what happened to your go-kart? Well, Elizabeth, it is actually getting there. Um, we took it for a few test drives, I just haven't gone around to uh, finishing the videos. It's still in a rough state, but we've actually driven it, and it's pretty awesome. Awesome Guy asks, can you have some giveaways where the prize is something you've made, please? At some point, yes. Maybe not right now, but soon. Rock Climber Jenna asks, besides building things, what are your hobbies? I used to do a lot of rock climbing, <laughs> coincidentally. Um, used to do uh, free running, parkour, gymnastics, um, I ride a motorcycle, and that's pretty fun, and I love to get into hang gliding and some other extreme sports like that, because that's, that's a lot of fun. I also swim. John Mayer asks, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much swag will your exoskeleton add? 10. Alright, one last question from uh, Stub Ryanful. Here are a few questions so that you have another sip of tea before you answer them. Alright. What type of mechanical engineering are you in? Uh, I studied mechanical systems engineering, so that's mechanical, a bit of electrical, and even some automation. Um, but the beauty of mechanical engineering is once you have a degree in it, you can really go anywhere. I could go into aerospace or um, industrial design. There's tons of stuff I could do. Um, right now, I like mechanical stuff. Not too crazy about electrical. Um, I like just making things out of metal and stuff, you know? <laughs> Uh, what was your first project you made? Um, back in high school, I was on the Skills Canada Robotics team. There's some videos if you look back in the channel. And, um, yeah, we made this really cool soccer playing robot car thing. And we actually won the national level competition back in 2007. So that was probably my first biggest engineering project that I did. Who do you idol in the making community? That would have to be, have to be the guys from Mythbusters, because, honestly, they have the best job ever. I would love to do stuff like them. And how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if you... Uh, you get the idea. Um, two trees. Alright, that's it for now. Stay tuned for next week when I answer some more questions. So, if your question didn't get answered, you can try asking again in this episode in the comments. And, um, see you next week.